record it and I can put it up. I can put it up on Vimeo and I can send you a link. Same way that I used to with Sot Songs. Okay, what, um, or, and then are you using Or you can record it, huh? Yeah, I can record it. I'm just looking for the, the best possible way to get the audio recorded locally so it's not recording over the internet if possible. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. So I've got my beautiful microphone here. Let's do it this way. That would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and then let's line up the files. Okay, so do we are recording. Do you do that in like GarageBand? What do you, what do you uh -huh. use that in? So, do you use that like GarageBand to record that or what do you normally um, record if you're gonna... if, if, if you're talking about this, the, the yeah. uh, it's just, I just use it for every day for this. Okay. When you're recording videos, what do you record them in? When I'm cutting videos, that's what I record with, yeah. But what software? Oh, uh, just Zoom. time or something? The uh, only what thing I Zoom? use is Zoom, because I don't, I don't, see, I don't do anything with it other than I cut the video, I upload it to to, to YouTube. What you what you get, see is, is whatever I did here. There's no cutting, there's nothing. I don't do any kind of software. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, when I send it to Vimy, you know, you know, I send it to, um, I mean, I, I download it to the computer and then I either send it, depending on what it is, I send it to either Vimeo or um, YouTube and they do the rest. They, they, they reconfigure it or whatever that, 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 that yeah, yeah, yeah. to take place. Okay. And then for audio, what do you, how do you get just the audio for the podcast? Um, so, well, what, what I do, the, uh, that, the audio is really is I can as I can open up the file for the video for the like uh, video that I just cut and there'll be an audio only you know it's an mp4 and then there's a something for that's audio only and okay. I just, so I can I just upload that okay and I can um, send you that and I, I, I can I can send you uh, yeah that recording I can send I can just send it to you because I, I mean it'll uh, an audio file will carry that well. Well, I didn't know if we were going to do. Uh, I guess we're not going to do audio, video. It's on radio. I mean, it's on. Yeah. Yeah, podcast. So right. yeah, if you could record through that mic locally, that'd be great. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so you're recording right now. Yeah, already. And I'm going to record to my computer here, and we should be okay. Um, all right. Well, welcome to the podcast, Brad. I'm so excited. Thank you. To have you it's, here. I'm, I'm I'm delighted to be here, and it's great to see you. Great to see you too. Uh, let me just give everybody else a little bit of the backstory about how we know each other. Okay. Um, so I I had had this friend who told me about Brad, and it was this non-dual spiritual teacher, and so I checked him out. I I. I don't remember if I found your podcast or YouTube first, but something. And I was immediately struck by a lot of the things that he was saying in a certain kind of language that I had been, I had just finished my book, This. And Fred was always talking about this. And it's a lot of the language, like some non dual teachers you hear use a lot of Sanskrit, use a lot of like, yeah, you know, lang religious jargon. And Fred was just very, plain with his speech like american south carolina <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of fancy jargon uh but it just was it was so to the point and beautiful and uh, i had just had an experience where i was trying to talk to somebody about non-duality and uh, awareness and enlightenment and and the way i was talking about it with them actually led them into a panic attack <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, job. Okay. I was like i think i better like figure out how to talk about this better so that <laughs> oh, maybe i may also, be missing something yeah i was like i wasn't accomplishing what i was setting out to do and talking to this guy about this um but i wanted to mention one other thing about a strange thing about why you stood out so much to me in particular i had a example in my book about a guy named Fred yeah who doesn't have a like he, he has this imaginary dog that he's having all these problems with <laughs> um, 
And then Fred has this example. It's Fred, and he's this example of this person who has an imaginary dog. And I'm like, what? And it was just too much. Yeah, yeah. So it was too much stuff. Contacted him and uh, started learning from Fred about how to talk about some of these things with people. And uh, he's been an amazing guide and teacher and friend um, in my life the last however long it's been now. I don't know. Uh, but so I'm so happy that you're on the podcast. It's so cool to have you here. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I really am. I'm just, I'm, I'm delighted to talk to you is what it amounts to. And if you want to record it, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe we could start with just a little of your story, your spiritual background and like what, how in the world are you, did you become this non-dual spiritual teacher can you just let's start yeah how that. does how that you... how does that happen i took a i took a wrong turn somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so um well just a, a a brief bit leading up to this is that um i was a i was raised in a christian home um and uh, when i became a teenager i just rejected that and uh which i don't anymore in the sense that I understand, I understand the non-dual aspects of Jesus's teachings and all of that, but I didn't understand it then. And, um, it was just, it was just what my parents were doing and therefore I didn't want to do it. Um, did you reject I, it more based on, on the ideas of it or just, you didn't want to follow it? Just, I didn't want to follow it. I, I really didn't. I, I didn't, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to do what my parents were doing. If they, if, yeah. you know, if, if they were eating, chocolate ice cream, I would have wanted to eat vanilla, right? <laughs> Even if I liked chocolate better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I, re I, just, I rebelled against anything. I was kind of like Marlon Brando, you know, when in the wild one, they say, uh, you know, the guy asked him, the policeman asked him, so what are you rebelling against? And Brando says, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that was very much that could have been a fredism as well and uh and i had no spiritual um path at all never thought about spirituality never gave it a second thought um but i was and and i became a practicing alcoholic at about 20 years old and and um which i you know my father had been alcoholic and uh i had no idea i mean i i didn't start out al drinking alcoholically it just turned into that which is understandable it's another form of seeking it's a, it's i'm seeking more and the, and that's that's kind of the, the disease of more and all seeking is really the disease of more and other um so the uh, wound up getting in a lot of trouble, staying in a lot of trouble in my twenties. And I went to jail two or three times. And, um, then I started hitting the asylums and, uh, because uh, I needed, I just had blown myself out into basically into homelessness. And it was like, well, I'll just tell the asylum that I want to kill myself, which isn't actually inaccurate. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, Maybe they'll take me in, you know, a mental hospital. And uh, so they took me in and uh, uh, one time and I stayed there one part of one winter. And then um, the next, uh, then, then I went out and screwed around for another year. And I ended up back at the same asylum uh, a year later. A friend of mine actually uh, took me there and uh, my best friends then and still. And, um, while I was staying in that mental hospital, I was doing drawing on the right side of your brain and I was drawing a picture upside down and a voice came in my head. It, it was, it, I mean, I know it was just in my head. It's not like I could hear it, it like it audibly, but I mean, it sounded just like you when you say hello. And it said, you should study Zen mm -hmm. out, of the, out of nowhere came this, you should study Zen. And I didn't even, I had just the most basic, barely knew what Zen was because of the beat. And this generation. was like in the eighties or something? Uh, yeah, this would have been, this was 1983. Okay. 
I think 1983. And um, there, so I decided when I got out of there, um, proudly displaying that I had a certificate declaring I was sane and not just there, nobody else did. So I just thought I was one up on you guys and um, I could prove I was sane. <laughs> And so I came out of there and, and, and it took no time at all. I started, um, I started studying uh, Zen. And so I started reading Zen book, books on Zen. Mm -hmm. And I still couldn't figure out what the hell it was about. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's just like this. What is it about? Uh, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> they like tell you riddles and... That's right. Yes, that's it. I mean, that's what the kind of stuff that was available. And um, so I tried to, to see if there was anybody locally and there wasn't, but there was a local Tibetan Buddhist center and I went to study for them and I, with them and they taught me how to meditate properly and um, that, and, and they were very nice people and I liked them a lot, but they were not, I mean, I'm just tell, telling you, they were dead set against me being the Dalai Lama. <laughs> <laughs> so you had no use for them anymore no so i had no use for that in the long run I mean, if, if i'm if i'm not going to be the leader i mean why play <laughs> and then to make a long st story short fast forward um uh, a few years and I'm now living in after bouts with alcoholism and losing everything I had and all this kind of thing, which, which was actually a pattern for me and um, to lose every, I seem to be very good at losing everything because I wasn't really losing it. I was giving it up. Right. Mm -hmm. I would just, just say, you know what? I wonder what's happening out on that highway. And then we'll just walk out of my apartment. Just boom. That would be mm -hmm. it, and get on the highway, hitchhike, hitchhike for several months, come back, got wow. nothing. So um, I ended up living in Portland, Oregon, and I went to the Zen Center there, and uh, they were nice people. I liked them very much. They were very kind, and and uh, but they were not going to let me be the Zen master, so I blew out of there in no time. <laughs> uh, and I thought, you know what? Here. Maybe you're just not a joiner. And I started studying. <laughs> so I just started studying Buddhism on my own, as I had already started before. So and I studied Buddhism for uh, for over twenty years, and or for twenty years, I studied uh, Buddhism and uh, pretty. I mean. I was a practicing alcoholic the whole time. So we have to understand that getting clear means something different for a drunk. <laughs> and basically I was hoping that the Zen would be a cure for my alcoholism, but it wasn't. What happened is during, but during the winter of the, my first winter of really going into Zen very deeply, in other words, lots and lots of practice and lots and lots of sitting, and lots of reading and really getting into it. And I stumbled across something that said all this, uh, I was working on a Cohen. I didn't have a, a master. I just thought I'd work on it myself. And the Cohen was, show me your original face, the face mm -hmm. that you had before your mother and father were born. And of course that makes no sense and didn't make any sense to me at all. But I still kept asking it and going after it and after it. And then in a Buddhist magazine, I ran across it, something, and it was beautiful. And there was a thing in there that said, you know, asking who you are is about the same thing as asking about uh, the, the, your mother's, uh, show me your mother and father's face, or show me your original face. And so I thought, well, that just kind of makes sense. I did not realize that the proper way to do non-dual inquiry is to go, uh, so who, you know, this is the way I saw it at the time, who am I? And then what you're actually after, because is you get the, you get the answer right the first time. 
which is, I don't know. <laughs> but you don't think you got the right answer. So, <laughs> you know that can't be it. And, and so you then go out and seek for 20 or 30 or 40 years until, until, you, find, until you find out that it led to, that it was all a bunch of nonsense. And, <laughs> and, and then usually what you do is die but if you don't, if you live long enough and you're lucky enough, maybe you'll wake up, maybe you'll experience in, in, enlightenment, at which point you still see that everything was a waste of time, <laughs> but it all makes sense, right? I mean, it kind of makes sense in the sense of, you can see that there's only this, as you say, that uh, there's only this and there's no, and the funny thing about this, the funny thing about what is, is that if we just look at what is right now, and what is, is for everybody listening to this, it's whatever is for you right now. If you're in your living room, it's your living room, it's your front yard, it's your, it's, and it's, that would include your country, your earth, the, the planet. What is, is everything. But the funny thing about everything is that it doesn't seem to be enough. <laughs> This is that disease of more, right? So the disease of more comes in and um, the, we, at any rate, the, the path of inquiry is I moved on through uh, until there was an awakening, a brief awakening in 1992. And I, I, I saw the truth and I knew that I had woken up. I know, wow, this is what, so this is what it is. Wow, I never saw this coming. <laughs> and and what, because, that, what was that experience like? like so, well, that experience that? with there is I was, um, it was pretty weird because I was doing a lot of sitting and I was sitting in my basement and I, for the first last and only time, which, and because it's just a, it's just a really a thought, but from, but my thinking was open to that, I guess. And it's, I thought that I saw a past life. And, um, and I was sad to see that I was not some wise oriental. You know, I was a cowboy in the desert, <laughs> right? <laughs> Around a fire. This is just not what I had in mind. You were and, the Dalai Lama, huh? Yeah, right, right. No Dalai Lama, that's it. I mean, I thought I came from a lineage of Dalai Lamas and Zen Masters <laughs> and all that. And instead, I came from a bunch of redneck cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that redneck thing, that, that, that whole thing, it, it lasted. When I first started teaching, the first video I ever cut, and when I, when I listened to it, I was so shocked and disappointed because I thought I was going to hear Eckhart Tolle <laughs> <laughs> with his beautiful English accent yeah, yeah. and this and this uh, this then this, 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 this beautiful <laughs> baritone that yeah, yeah. sounded like velvet. <laughs> and you know, instead, I got hi yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was very disappointing once again. Fred had let me down. But the good news is now Fred really doesn't let me down much because what I found out, it found out is if you want to be happy, lower your standards. <laughs> <laughs> now I just don't expect anything out of Fred, right? And, and <laughs> It's yeah. so much, it's just so much easier than constantly trying to, because what we do is we set, we set um, uh, goals for ourselves. We set um, points of where this is, where this is where I should be. And this is where I should, we should get. And then next I should get there. And yeah. we, first we set goals and then we fail to, to meet them. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. we get to feel crummy about ourselves. So, I just short circuited all that, right? And so I had this awakening in 92. It was very quickly overtaken by ego because the funny thing about an awakening was I came to see, Michael, I came to see 
that I was nothing, but that nothing, that, or I was no thing, but that no thing was, it was, I mean, I, I came to realize God, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, but, and I came to see that I was no, th- there was no Fred. Mm-hmm. And there was, no, there was just, there was just the, there was just one thing going on and it was pretty cool. <laughs> and yeah. the, but the problem was, is that five minutes after I came to see that I was nothing, um, then ego co-opted that awakening and went and said, boy, you've had an awakening, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is, this is now that you, and now that you have seen that you are nothing, this really makes you something. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's mm-hmm. so it just, I just got a swollen head and I immediately, speaking of the swollen head, I immediately shaved my head because you couldn't see that I was now the cool guy who had had the enlightenment experience. So I figured if I shaved my head, it might draw a little more attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> Put on some robes or something, some beads. Yeah, right. Exactly. Started dressing all in black and shaved my head. It was, uh, you know, it's it's just so humorous because I see people doing this all the time now. <laughs> I mean, this very same kind of behavior, and um, which is it's just pretty it's part of, part of the, the the journey. It's just part of yeah. the, it, nothing wrong with it. Nothing. It's just that's how they things get a, happen. They get a spiritual name like Vishnu or something like that. Uh, the um, well, I was, I did have a, I did have a name. It was called, I was called Bodhi Sanyasi. <laughs> and um, so, and, and Bodhi Sanyasi was a, was a holy figure and um, who just wanted, was hoping that he could parlay this spiritual experience into getting some girls. <laughs> Because that was <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was modestly successful with that. <laughs> um, Did you go, like to go to Bali or anything like that? No, no, no. I didn't need. I, I, uh, I didn't. No, I expected everybody to come to me. And, yeah. Right, because we now we had a new mecca of Portland, and mm-hmm. I just figured my my flock would figure out that I was in Portland <laughs> yeah. and everybody would start making the journey. And, um, but they didn't. And uh, so I was studying, uh, went back to studying Buddhism and, uh, and went back to, because now my thing was that I had had a genuine, an authentic enlightenment experience. I know that because there's been others since, but there, there was no other one for 14 years. Mm-hmm. I woke up in first time in 1992 and then I had the big awakening in 2006. So 14 years in between where I knew that I knew something that nobody knew. Mm. I just couldn't remember what it was that I knew. (laughs) 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 But I knew it set me apart. And, um, you know, I I, I, I wanted to parlay that into something, but really, in the end, I did not. Um, then some years later, just jump a bit and I, I get sober through, uh, the 12 step program and, um, which was, which saved my life also saved my wife's life. She was a drug addict and alcoholic and, and she looks like a school teacher now, as you know, and she would, mm-hmm. you would never, ever, ever in the world guess that she used to be who, what she was. And, and it's pretty difficult to imagine me reeling around <laughs> to do, but, but I did. Um, I got sober. And when I got sober, I, I was so afraid that I would mess it up because they had this, AA had this simple little uh, spirituality 
which was not, and I was so afraid that I would mess it up and not get sober. And I, because I always messed things up and gotten drunk again. So this time I thought, said for, for a solid year, I am not going to try to fix their spirituality. Hmm. I'm going to actually listen to them instead of getting them to listen to me. And uh, so for a year, I wouldn't touch Zen or anything else. But boy, when I hit a year, then I went ahead, I jumped right back. I mean, the first thing I did was jump right back into Zen. And I started studying it very, very closely. Um, but I couldn't get back to where I was. I couldn't get back to that, that 1992 thing. And I thought that that was enlightenment and that I had had enlightenment. It felt to me like Fred had had something very special, something happened very special to Fred. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, who knows, I held my mouth wrong or I stepped on a crack in the sidewalk, whatever it was, but I lost it. Yeah. So I had it, I lost it, and now it was Fred's job to get it back. Mm -hmm. like, which is, as you know, that's, a, that, that's textbook, you're not gonna get there from here, right? Yeah. And, but, but I couldn't remember that. I just couldn't remember what had happened because you can't remember actual awakening because three pounds of goo that you've got in your <laughs> head cannot contain that, right? Mm -hmm. That the, 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 this little limited brain can't possibly contain the infinite. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I would never could come to understand it still. And I'm proud to, to tell you that I still don't understand this. Mm -hmm. People ask me all the time, Fred, could you explain this to me? And I think, well, how can, am I going to explain what I don't understand? <laughs> mm -hmm. But I can point him toward the truth. Mm -hmm. That's quite different. And uh, then, then, then telling somebody about something. Mm -hmm. I can take him to the truth. I can take him to the truth with awakening sessions. That, that's what actually, I mean, whatever little bit of fame I have in the non-dual community, I mean, fame and non-dual are sort of like, you know, <laughs> right. It's like I, you know, when I talk about my best-selling non-dual books, the the the, the non-dual cancels out the best-selling. <laughs> if you're not non-duality and realize that that's a book that sold thousands of copies versus a book that sold six to my my mother, <laughs> my cousin, my <laughs> to the other non-dual teachers. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> And um, so I, and then one day I was reading something and, and I realized that I wasn't really Buddhist anymore, that the, the AA had had enough influence that it felt like, it, it, it felt like there was something. That's all I could say is it just felt like there was something. I, said, I can't really say much more than that now, but the, except for that I'm it. And that's quite a big job. Mm -hmm. But uh, where was I? So I, I had the, okay, so when I, what happened was I ran across the word, the, 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 the phrase Advaita Vedanta. Mm -hmm. And they were talking like just exactly, right? I mean, that was my language. I heard it and it was like coming home. I started out with Eckhart Tolle and the power of now. Did not understand him. Did, did, didn't try to understand it. Just tried. I did the first time, but the second time I read that book when I got in more trouble and I came to it for solace. Um, I really put my, my attention on it, which was, which is key. So we, you know, you what, whatever, you, whatever you focus your attention on will expand in your experience. And mm -hmm. I put myself, my, my attention almost completely on non-duality. I mean, mm. I was just, I was listening to videos and things like 12, 16 hours a day. Wow. I had, I had Eckhart's The Power of Now running in my living room 24 seven. Wow. So if I went down the steps, I could hear it. And at the top, but not getting it. 
You're listening. Oh, you're I was starting to get it. I was starting to get it. I was, you could feel the, the movement and, the, yeah. and I was starting to get it. And I had, um, but the other thing, see, but I had, I had gotten in uh, trouble again, but not for anything I'd done lately, but I made some amends through AA and I got in some trouble over one of those amends. And um, so I went to jail again. And when I did, uh, my head just went crazy because here I've been trying to do the right thing for several years now. And all of a sudden I'm paying for something from 40 years ago. So it was hard for me to get my head around. It was terrific suffering. And the first time I ever heard Eckhart's voice, I realized, wow, listen to that. So that guy is not having anything like my experience <laughs> because my brain is going crazy with this. And it was already crazy, but it was now going more crazy. And I thought, well, you could, you're going to listen to a brain. You know you are. So you can listen to his brain or you can listen to yours. And I decided I would listen to his and just completely overwrite mine was the objective. And I pretty much did that. Um, because like I said, I had uh, the power of now playing 24 seven in my living room. I had other he Eckhart CDs in my car and I did a lot of traveling to, to acquire books. I was a bookseller online. And, um, and I also had uh, where my computer was and I was up there packing books all day uh, to send out. I had another Eckhart on, you know, I had something I downloaded from, from the internet or whatever. So, or maybe another CD set. So I had Eckhart everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was, and really, if you listen to an hour of Eckhart, that's it. <laughs> yeah. You can get a whole Eckhart teaching in just in just one sitting, mm -hmm. no problem. But you don't understand what the teaching. You don't get the ramifications. You don't really get it. But you can. But you intellectually you get it. So what I'm telling you is is that this was because it was six months probably of twelve to eighteen hours a day, and it was. Um, And what was I got? So it, it, and it was the same thing being said over and over and over again, mm -hmm. a slightly different way. And of course, mm -hmm. now the interesting thing is I find myself with such a teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I've got one thing to sell and I package it, package it as many ways as I can uh, in order to get the teaching out there. You know, the uh, podcast, YouTube channel, I got another YouTube channel starting up soon. I got, um, you know, and I've got the website and I've got a podcast and blah, 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 blah right? And um, so I just kind of redid what Eckhart was doing, except for the fact I didn't leave my house. I didn't go out and carry this message. I carried this message as far as my living room. And that's about as far as I get, took it for a long time because I didn't, I mean, I had no, I knew I'd been a fraud all my life. I'd been living as an, as an alcoholic, trying to get you to believe I was living as something other than an alcoholic. And that's just a life of fraud. So there was a sense that, well, I may, might, I think maybe I'm a non-dual fraud. Hmm. At any rate, at some point, I got into the Advaita Vedanta thing very, very heavily. And uh, then in 2006, I had just gone in through incredibly painful circumstances. I was just absolutely miserable. I wanted, I really wanted to commit suicide, but I, I, but I couldn't hurt my then girlfriend, now wife like that. I loved her more than I hated my life. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't kill myself, but I came to a point where I didn't, where it was just, I, I got angry. My surrender, so to speak, was out of anger. It wasn't out of, it wasn't angels and light for me. It wasn't butterflies and stuff. It was, screw it, yeah. right? Do what you want to. And I'm talking about, and, and now this is a conversation. I'm not even recognizing that basically what I'm trying to do is I'm talking to God. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to God about this unit. See, mm -hmm. now if I'm talking to God about this unit, where am I? So that, but that didn't occur to me at the time. It's so I can't be the God. I can't be the unit. Or I'm both. But 
And I said, screw it, do whatever you want to with it. Kill it, fine. The, uh, I get to die guilt free. <laughs> you know, kill it, um, torture it, put it in prison, do whatever you want. I don't care. I just, mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm no longer interested in this story at all. Mm-hmm. And um, the following morning, I didn't recognize it as surrender at all, just anger. And um, the next morning, I was reading a non-dual book as I was coming down my steps, which I, you know, don't know how I didn't kill myself, but I, mean, I used to read everything I was doing. I had was a book in front of me. And it asked a question. The, the teacher in that book, which was Ramesh Balsakar's Pointers from Nizagadatta was the book. And in that book, the, the Nizagadatta, I'm talking about Niz, Nizagadatta Maharaj, who was a great Indian spiritual teacher, one of generally recognized as one of the two foremost figures in Indian Advaita for the for the 20th century. And he is my forefather, although he died not knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a forefather, he's my forefather father from my view, but not from his. <laughs> and um, so It, and the question asked. So you're reading that. You're reading that. I'm book, reading that up. book, and it said, and the question that Ramesh asked, he said, "When everything else is gone, what's left?" And I just stopped what I was doing. I stopped and I sat down on the stairs, and and all of a sudden it was just. I started actually doing that. How do you do that when everything else is gone? It was like, okay, so take away. The, take away the body, take away the house, take away the car, take away the books, uh, take away the history, take away this, that, the other. And um, I got up again, moved to my chair in the living room, and then sat down and something, it felt like, Michael, it felt like something like a BB, a little tiny round ball. And, and I've never heard anybody else talking about this. So it's not like, it's not copycat. It, it, there was a little round ball that turned 180 degrees on the very top of my head. I can, I'm not a chakra guy, but I, it would be called a crown chakra. Mm-hmm. And it turned and it, it, it unlocked. It didn't lock, it unlocked with, like with a click that I could hear and I could feel that movement. And the instant it clicked, my head exploded. Mm-hmm. And I had a big, big storybook mm-hmm. of non-dual awakening where I, you know, I don't even remember the first few hours. It was just, mm-hmm. there was this, I don't even know if I remember anything about the first day. Uh, I can remember sitting in my living room, but I think that was the next day that I was doing that. So there was just, in one of the words, there was a seeing that there was no Fred that's what a non-dual awakening is, is coming to know who you truly are. And who I truly am is that just one thing going on here. That's what the mystics of all traditions, they go out and they have a spiritual experience. They come back to us and report it, blah, 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 blah. But after you get through with it, what they have just told you is there's just one thing going on. Oneness is their message. And oneness doesn't mean oneness plus Fred. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. oneness there's no oneness plus and yeah it's not no I'm part of oneness. oneness huh it's not i'm part of oneness i heard you say no, no it's not yeah bro it's like it's not I'm, in oneness. Me, I'm part of it and i say well which part are you <laughs> 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 yeah or i'm in it uh, 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 uh. yeah so there was this terrific experience it lasted for for, well, it, it well, it lasted for I don't know several weeks, but in in ever slowing or ever ever uh, waning electricity, the clarity that I had at the beginning, I began to see that uh, you know. In other words, I began to, to pay attention to thought again. That big explosion of non-duality was just was I ceased to believe really in anything. 
I just, it was just, there was just, everything was blown and I had no thought. I didn't have words for this and everybody can try this at home right now is if you just, if you just zip your mouth and pretend that you have never had any access to language whatsoever, you were just born with your mouth zipped and, and look around me and, and, and you, and you, 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 can't hear, I mean, you, you can't hear what a, you can't have been, you hadn't been taught. And then just look around and tell me in the absence of language, what do you find? And the, in the absence of language, what I found was the inexplicable, mm -hmm. the infinite, the eternal, mm -hmm. the, the magnificent, uh, and, and, and I came to see that, strangely enough that, well, I thought at that time that I was that oneness. Now I see that I'm something prior even to consciousness, but it's but oneness is close enough, mm. but, but <clears throat> I came to see that I was this magnificent oneness and that that's where, I mean, that's, there was no longer any identity with a Fred Davis or a body, right. Or any of that. <clears throat> so, and and my but but the identification came back. I like to say that enlightenment is like you have a big metal bar on your chest, and when when enlightenment comes, that just explodes. Mm -hmm. And when and after that explodes, then um, the first thing that happens is that there rises from the body a giant magnet. And the first thing it does is start pulling all those iron filings that just blew up right mm. back to settle in. And the ego is rebuilt. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> so enlightenment is not a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. Enlightenment is a this-time thing. Yeah. And uh, we, are in, we are awake to this moment or we are not. And there's no one here <clears throat> who is, as you know, who is permanently enlightened because there's nothing permanent here to be enlightened. Yeah. Yeah. There is enlightenment, but it doesn't belong to anybody. Yeah. It's not my enlightenment. It is just, there's enlightenment mm. and, uh, because in the absence of a Fred, all I can find here is a sort of awareness. Right? I find what I call awakeness usually. I like to use awakeness rather than awareness because in non-duality, we have beat the awareness thing to death. And mm. the minute you say awareness, everybody's got a pretty good idea what you're talking about. Mm. But when you say awakeness, they go, huh? And that's what you want is that huh? Because that mm. non-dual, it's just like non-dual inquiry. You're not going for an answer. You're going for the pause that happens when it's seen that there, that there is no answer and the mm. mind stops. It just, that's mm. all you're trying to do is stop the mind because in, when, when you stop the mind, then you, then, then awakeness has got a decent shot of working its way into your life, <laughs> but it can't do it. And I was so egotistical. So and there's still arrogance here. There's plenty of arrogance here. You know that. And there's plenty of ego here, but I don't, take them seriously. And, and, and if you do, that's your problem. That's not my problem. <laughs> right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not expecting any more out of Fred than I'm getting. <laughs> and if you are, that, that's, you need to reset your, need to reset your expectations. I can't live up to them and won't try. Um, from there, just to, just going as quickly as I can while maintaining some coherence, is that uh, I really did a lot of inquiry over the next few years. Over the next uh, next four years, I did tremendous um, inquiry, and I wanted to be a non-dual teacher more than anything on earth. And two By things, Corey, people that aren't familiar with that as a practice, it's basically a inquiry would go the, the way that I do it, it, it the, the classic way is who am I? And then you just, in, and then you, but you let that question just sit 
because there's no answer or the answer comes, I don't know. But when the answer comes, I don't know, then you can ask, well, who is it who does that it? doesn't know, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And you just keep following that trail and, until the mind is stopped and, and something happens. Mm -hmm. And I just have an ability basically, and it's done through, uh, what I do is done through a series of tricks. <laughs> I just basically go around and I trick myself. There's only one thing going on. I can't like I, I can't talk to mm -hmm. anybody but myself ever. I'm talking mm -hmm. to myself right now. I'm operating through a Michael unit, but that's just a Michael uh, virtual helmet that I've got mm -hmm. on. So I'm mm -hmm. having a a, a a a Michael experience. I awakeness am. This isn't Fred and Michael's dream. Fred and Michael are the dream. Yeah. So. <clears throat> And if you you if you don't get that, don't worry. It may take some time. <laughs> so, when in 2010 I went to go see went to an Ajashanti who's a well known spiritual non dual teacher, and I went to an event of his. It's the only non dual event I have ever gone to where I wasn't the speaker. And I went there and I had a, an intensive. Spent four hours with 200 or 300 other people in listening to him and being in his presence and all of this. And I left there going, nope, that's not for me. After all, I don't want to be a teacher. I thought, mm -hmm. and, you know, I always wanted to be a teacher, but I think after viewing this, I had a good time and all that, but I had no desire to be that guy on the stage because I couldn't see how he came up with those answers because people were just lobbing stuff at him, questions at him from out of nowhere. <clears throat> and he just got it completely. Well, earlier today, I had a client talking, talking about my satsang, and she said, it, it's, it's like watching a ping pong match. So they throw in a question and you bat it back, right? You, 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 you just, you, they throw in a question, you answer it. They throw in another one, you answer it. You throw in another one, you answer it. But I don't answer any of that. It just happens, right? I, I, is that, see, this is like the Pillsbury Doughboy, but when you touch my stomach, out comes wisdom, right? That's all. But but I really re am much better responding to conditions than I am sitting back and hatching up a good story to tell everybody, like, a, you know, Jesus had his parables. Good for him. I don't, right? And it's I do have lots and lots of stories, but they are always to illustrate a a specific point. There's nothing vague about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after I decided I would, did not want to be a non-dual teacher, I drove home and about 30 days later, the first guy woke up talking to me. And I, it, and he had never heard the word non-duality. So he wasn't a non-dual guy. He was washed in the blood. But he trusted <laughs> <right>? <laughs> And I'm sh I don't know that he'd ever heard the name, the word uh, enlightenment. But we were, I, but I was just trying something out. He trusted me. I was his, had been his sponsor year be years before in recovery, but I had finally fired him. So, uh, and I was no longer his sponsor, but he was my friend. And we were just, I started just basically doing, I, I, I couldn't see it really, but it was, I started doing inquiry with him. And, um, and bam, his head exploded and he woke up. This is like a, this is like a, a, a 320 pound guy, six, eight or something. I mean, he's just, he's just a mountain of a man. And I had a little tiny living room, a little tiny apartment. And he just started laughing and so did I. And we about blew the roof off that place mm -hmm. because I don't know who was more surprised, me or him. And uh, cause he didn't even yeah. know about this didn't know, no idea about this. He wasn't trying to get it. Um, and I had no clue whatsoever that I, that I could help anybody wake up. I mean, that was all for, that was for those guys. Right? Yeah. That was for the other people that were born under a cabbage on a full moon or something. It's one of the most beautiful sights that I've ever seen to watch somebody wake up to their it is. true nature. It is, it is. You, you, and you never, ever tire of it. I've had I don't know how many. I've certainly had hundreds and hundreds, maybe as many as two thousand people wake up with me, and I'm I'm just as fascinated when some when yeah. when it happens with somebody now as I was then. 
So I want to, in this context of this podcast, there's a lot of listeners who came from Christian backgrounds. And it's an interesting, like, it's kind of a, there's a lot of people who have gone more progressive with their ideas, you know, maybe they're reading the Bible more metaphorically, maybe they've, they've mm-hmm. accepted that LGBTQ people are not sinners, maybe right. they've deconstructed their views of hell, or, right. um, or, or a lot of, you know, dogmatic things. But then what I've noticed in a lot of progressive Christian circles is at some point you start, you start deconstructing, taking away, taking away. And then what's left at some point becomes kind of like a, a morality, a new moralism. And it's kind of like a lot of the stuff that Jesus would talk about. It's kind of like, why? So <laughs> what is it? And, you know, what's so, happening is when you're, I would imagine because if that's what happens with my, and I work with Christians, I work with, mm-hmm. I work with Buddhists and Hindus. I have, I have woken up as in Zen teachers and lamas from India, from Tibet and everything in between. Um, what happens is that when you become open, that, that immediately, just that sense of openness, like I'm going to question this. I'm not just going to say, yes, I get it. I believe too. I'm just going to say, well, let me look and see what it is that I really believe and why it is that I believe it. With that openness, that's the big, that creates enough space, so to speak. Just imagine um, the body is a teapot and that, that openness pours some tea out of the pot. So now there's room for some more tea. But, or if we would consider it to be a cup, that's the better way to put it, is that the cup, and you've, you've been a full cup. No, you can't get past that because you already know everything. You've already believed it, and, and I can't win from there, so I don't play. When you begin to get open, that creates a space for something else to happen, for something else to be seen. And when when you start to unwrap that what you're really doing is you're because this is not about doing this is my first or my second book my the my biggest book at that time as far as as far as sales is concerned the book that made me is the book of undoing and because i came to realize that it was not about adding knowledge it was about getting rid of the assumptions that we already had, questioning all of the assumptions, all the way down to the most core assumptions that there are for a human being, mm-hmm. so all the way down. And when you start, uh, you, you know, it's just like I've got a ball here in my hand and I'm covering it up with a napkin and then I got another napkin, not a napkin, a Kleenex, and I've got, so I've got all these Kleenex now on top of this ball. And this ball is, is, the, uh, the, is the truth. It's the truth of you. It's not just a vague truth. It's the truth of you. And when I, as, I, as I began to take these Kleenex off, we, I can see now, now there's fewer Kleenexes. I can see, uh, guess a little bit better about the shape of what might be underneath. But when I get to the last Kleenex and I pull it out, pull it off, I don't have to do anything. The truth is already there. The ball is in my hand. The truth was there all along. It was just mm-hmm. veiled. So one of my books yeah. is called The Book of Unveiling. For, that exactly, for exactly that reason, mm-hmm. is that you, we start taking away the, the conditioning, the, 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 the assumptions that... I've got it, I, that I am right, that I am the, that man is the measure of all things and that, uh, and I am the, the, and I'm the measure of man and I am right. There's all of that in there. Yeah. So you're just deconstructing something. It's not, it's not yeah. constructing something. Yeah, but what I was, what I've noticed sometimes is there's an interesting sort of, at a certain layer of the napkins are being pulled away, you kind of, 
almost wonder why are we pulling napkins away, right? Because there's a, at the beginning that we, a lot of us started with this, you've got to be okay. You've got to be saved. You have, to, we're looking for salvation. We're looking right. for the thing. And then we saw all yeah. the ways that that went awry and all the ways that that became us versus them. And people were raised up on platforms that thought they were better than other people. And we saw all the ways that that was yes, that's it. Right. And then, but then at some point we're like still kind of playing the, the Christian card or saying we're in the camp or whatever. But we're kind of like, what is salvation? What are we even doing here? Like, yeah. <laughs> what are yeah, we about? Right. What, are we, what, what, am, what are we doing here? What, what is this about? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to keep going. And that last, it seems to me that that last napkin is yourself. Is like, who are you? That's that last. Yes. That's the last thing. That you that's can the last do. thing. And, you just, and then the, the, who you are is right there. And the first thing you notice is that there were never any napkins or Kleenex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But there was a thought of a napkin. There, was many, there were many thoughts, and we had to see that those thoughts were not true. And the more thoughts, thoughts that you see that are not true, and I can't find a thought that's true, the, yeah. so you, as you come to see <laughs> that... Uh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> so as you come to see um it, you can't find a thought that was true i'm sorry to interrupt that beautiful thought that was happening go ahead please <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I just, I don't know. it wasn't true right but here's the thing is to understand is that see this is what happens is that awakeness has no memory <laughs> Because there's only now. Yeah. So if you ask me what was said two minutes ago, I don't know. Fred wasn't here <laughs> to record it. <laughs> uh, so this concept of that something needs to be done gets lost. I mean, this, I'm kind of unveiling my my nefarious plans with even how we're framing this season of yeah. pulling apart the stories that pull us apart. Yeah, I love it. I love because it. it's kind of the the practice of pulling off the napkins, of beginning to surrender our veils of illusion to the moment mm -hmm. as we begin to like, oh, it's mm -hmm. like this letting go of something. And that kind of process of letting go begins to mm -hmm. unfold um, until, until there's nothing left to unfold but this moment. And it is what it is. Um, but that, that idea of enlightenment or salvation, because I think so many of us have come from a place where the ideas like that have been used destructively, it's kind of left even as a concept for a lot of people, which part of that's kind of cool, I guess, because then, you, great, have you pulled apart that napkin already? Uh, but inviting people, how do you, I don't know. I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about As that. As an how old car salesman, the way that I see it is that the salvation at the end of the deal or the enlightenment at the end of the deal is just comeback bait for a fraudulent teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, you know, well, I, you're, you're on the way, you're on the path, and I think you're going to get there, but you'll know. <laughs> but keep yeah. those checks coming. And yeah. it's, See, there's a lot more money to be made in adding something to somebody than there is in subtracting. Mm. Like if people go to a self-esteem class, they're going to get added and find out just how small yeah, yeah. they really are. Yeah, but they yeah. come to my class, they find out they don't exist. <laughs> and there's a bigger, there's a bigger audience <clears throat> for, for riches and fame than there is for mine, which is my invitation. Very simple. Come die with me. Yeah. <laughs> There's not people understanding that line for that, but yeah. but around the world, I mean, I had thousands of followers, so actually there are a lot of people in terms of numbers. It's just the percentages are abysmal. <laughs> yeah, but the experience that you're pointing to yeah. is is such a beautiful experience, and like I said, like when you see somebody's eyes light up. I've been in sessions that I've done with people where just you can, it, 
it's like I don't even know how to describe it. There's it's like a film comes off the eyes or something. Yes, like there's yes, this layer of that's suffering. the reason we call it waking up yeah. because it really it, there's it, there is no awakening, but we there is what there isn't. You can't see that there wasn't any awakening until after you've already woken up. That I know that sounds like yeah. mm -hmm. gobbledygook, but it's not, as you know. So the 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 if. What were, what were we talking about? <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm kind of asking a very obscured question because I don't, I guess what I'm getting at is trying to point to that which doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but, but, but because there's a, there's a love, there's a compassion behind the pointing. It's pointing you're at this. pointing to something. There, there, there is a pointing to something. It's noticing that the tool doesn't really exist, which is the mm. body. Of the, the human being, the Fred character, there is a there is a if we have a but awakeness pretend, exists. Yeah, let's pretend yeah. that this is Hurricane Fred, and it just you know, and you can see Hurricane Fred is composed of all these sympathetic bands of um, weather, like big thunder and lightning and wind and uh, and flood and and all this kind of stuff and lightning and um, these and they work cooperatively. And when you look at it, we give them names. We call them, we call them Fred. We call them Michael. These hurricanes that come up. I'm in South Carolina. We see them. And the there, the sense is that there's really something in there that we're right sad. in the middle of that hurricane. Yeah. That's the essence of the hurricane. That's where the mm -hmm. truest. That's where the hard candy center. Of the Me. hurricane is <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. and <clears throat> and instead, there, it, it's it's just just the opposite. When you take a when the weather surface flies through a hurricane, once they hit the center, once they hit the eye, what they hit is an absence of hurricane. Mm. They hit an absence of storm. They don't find a presence. Yeah. They yeah. find an absence of storm. And we as individuals are very much like that. There is no Fred, but there's Fred Ness. It's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. It's you're you're talking to <laughs> you're talking to Fred Ness. I'm talking to Michael Ness. There's no yeah. Michael, but there's yeah. Michael Ness. There is those there are those patterns. But those patterns are not being guided by something in the center that's yes. that is, because I noticed that that, that center. When we look at it from the standpoint of individuals, what I noticed is I was always in center, the center of things. Actually, I was always the center of the universe. And not just figuratively, but literally, if I looked down, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> we look, look at this, I'm right in the middle. And, <laughs> <laughs> and was, everywhere I went, you. every view it's, I took, yeah, I was yeah. in the middle. So clearly yeah. it was all about me. And it is all about me, but not that me. <laughs> mm. It is all about whatever it is that I am, because the truth is, is the reason you can't talk about it is that what we're talking about is actually prior to language. And it's, you, you cannot, and, and language cannot explain that which is prior to it. Mm. It is prior to thought. You can't think about that which is prior to thought. It is prior to experience. You cannot experience what you what is prior to experience. That's what we want to do, and so we're trying to grab something. But the but but the, the very act of trying to grab something is actually the act of pushing it away. Mm. Because I'm thinking that I'm going to add something to a Fred, but there's no Fred here. There's just Fredness. And as I add more and more Fredness, I just get more and more impressed with myself. Or disgusted with myself because, damn it, I should be able, should be clearer than this. I should be able to get rid of all this stuff, right? I should mm -hmm. be able to, 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 to uh, I should be able to, to uh, I should be more awake than I am. I should be more spiritually than advanced than I am. Well, who told you that? I just made it up. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's yeah. it. Is we construct these points, the, 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 these, we, these these points that we have to hit, I can't think of the word that I'm really going for, but the, we, we have these, we think we're going to have levels or something 
and and we construct those and then we fail to hit them we, because we don't need to hit them we're already at the top we're at the top looking down we're already in heaven and we're knocking from the inside yeah. <laughs> we're knocking on the door let me yeah. in let me in <laughs> yeah. please let me in because i'm not i'm because i'm not home but you are home. This, the, you are already home, and the it would a seeker seeking its true nature is just it is just true nature seeking true nature, and which as well, long as you're seeking it, you can't find it. I love I love that image, and I think of the image when Jesus talked about standing at the heart and door and knocking. I love that reversed from the inside knocking. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's fantastic. Because that, that, that's the truth of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and so that, that we're just begging to get in, but we're all, well, all we can do is you can't seek. It's just like me trying to seek and asking you, because you're the great, you're the great teacher of these things. And Michael, how do I get to the, the chair in my <laughs> studio? <laughs> and you would have to answer well, Fred the truth is you're already in the chair in your studio and yeah. I would come back and say yeah I understand that intellectually <laughs> it's just not my experience, experience that I'm in my chair in my studio even though I'm speaking to you from the chair in my studio yeah it is just it is that crazy so yeah. this these teaching that you can't they're they're not conventional. Yeah. But they're you know but they're not they're not evil they're not putting anybody down you can go be any religion you want I don't care I've helped people and then they go back to their own religions but they now have an understanding of what the founders of their religion yes. are talking about it before the clerks <laughs> got it yes oh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and it's the, the simplest thing in the clergy. world. It's the simplest thing in the world. It is. It's, it's the most it's obvious this. thing in the world when it is, but it's not until it is. And there, there's, you, you, you I, when I first woke up, it was so simple, so easy that I thought, man, how is it that everybody doesn't wake up? And now that I have, been awake for 14 years and I have dealt with hundreds of not thousands of students the my amazement is just the opposite now I can't believe anybody wakes up even though I wake people up every week there is still if I if, if Fred thought he had to get out of bed and wake somebody up I wouldn't get out of bed because I wouldn't have no idea how that happens fortunately mm -hmm. My position here is to get this body to the computer. <laughs> and then I vacate and something happens. Something happens. But it's not, it's not my doing. I didn't, and it, just so we're very, very clear, I did not earn this. I do not, it's not a matter of my deserving this. It is, uh, you know, it, it's what I think we could call grace on the one hand, or if we were not very spiritually minded, we could just call it love. Mm. And the, 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 because the world is, God is not fair, so to speak, or the world is not fair. Thank goodness. Because if it was, I'd be living, in, or I'd be dead in a park somewhere or under a bridge. I, what happened is, I am pretty sure about this, Michael. I don't know the details, but there was an afternoon when God and St. Peter were talking to each other. And God looked in that. I was living in the park in Portland, homeless, penniless, friendless, hopeless, helpless, all of it. And, uh, and they looked down into the park and they saw me and God looked at St. Peter and said, you know, I could even make a spiritual teacher out of that if I wanted to. And, and St. Peter said, no way. And God said, yeah, I could. And St. Peter said, bet. And so they bet. And then God was not so happy with his bet. 
<laughs> and so he's going to say, what he, <laughs> what he could see was that he had a really had his hands full and he thought, you know, the only way I'm going to be able to wipe this unit up and keep it away is to have people is to have people come to him and wake him up several times a day. Mm -hmm. So I figured out, so as a spiritual teacher, I had figured out how to get people to pay me to come and clear me up three or four times a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a great scam you know don't, don't tell anybody <laughs> it is it is what the zen teachers used to say it's selling water by the river yeah but to the river <laughs> yeah, to the river that's it yes, yes. But, the, but the amazing thing is is that people find a lot of value in it well i was in satsang yesterday and one of my students he's been with me many years and just and um, he woke up years ago, and is and as clear as a bell, and uh, he I did not even know it until yesterday after all these years that he was suicidal before he met me, mm -hmm. and that and and he is filled with gratitude, and that Michael is the touchstone of all of this. There is a gratitude. That's what I love in you is that we get together, we look at each other, we start laughing. Mm -hmm. that's just because it's just funny to, 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 <laughs> yeah, right? it is funny it's, it's just funny <laughs> and, it's, and, and and there is a and there is a lightness that comes from a, from a, the wellspring of gratitude which is that, that the, 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 the foundation of awakening is that wellspring of gratitude and if you're not grateful you, you you can you can be resentful or you can be free but you can't be both at the same time so mm -hmm. i think you can be right or you can be free but you can't be both at the same time so if you can get over needing to be right yeah and and and, and needing to be the one who knows and all of that because i'm i'm just i'm no wiser than socrates i mean i have no I, socrates was the man who declared he knew nothing I declare that same thing. I know nothing. Thank goodness. And I'm hoping I don't pick anything up during this interview. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope the audience doesn't either. <laughs> yeah. My another book is the book of unknowing. And I'm not trying to push my books. I'm saying the titles say it all. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Been a fun ride. It's been a fun ride. Yeah, it's a fun ride currently. Yeah, it is. It's a it, the, this whole thing. It's a wonderful ride. Everything counts in this life. Everything counts down to the slightest detail. Everything counts. But the good news for you and me is what we know is that ultimately, nothing matters. And if you work that out intellectually, you've got it wrong. You can't know until you do. You yeah. can't work this, because you can't get this thing. That's the reason I said I don't understand anything. You can't understand this. It is something that is grok. And the word grok is, yeah. it just means that you get something on a very core, almost like cellular level, and you don't know how you got it, but that's the way things are. And it's not, and there's never a Fred or a Michael that groks it. It's a whiteness that comes to grok itself. Yeah. That's the beauty. I like the, um, the scripture, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's it. And so like, like having Eckhart on constantly, like if this, if this isn't making sense for you as a listener and you're like, I'm, what do you mean? I'm not real. It's me. I'm just, I'm here. And if it's, right. just, if it's not right. resonating, keep right. listening, keep hearing and keep let hearing. awakeness, let awakeness hear it. Nizargadatta said, you need no practices. You need not do anything other than to keep company with the sages. Mm. And keeping company with the sages is enough. Yeah. And I agree. But it yeah. is, <clears throat> if, you have a, an, if you have an authentic sage, it's contagious. Yeah. Because who doesn't want to be free, even though we're all free? 
right? I mean, I think of this kind of freedom is is that I think of it as a as an airplane flying across the desert, and you look down, and you see a guy there in the desert, just one guy all by himself, and he's holding a jail cell door. Just holding the door out there in the middle of nowhere. There are no walls or anything like that, and he's holding that door and he's screaming, "Let me out! Let me out!" But all he's got to do is just let go of the door. Yeah. It will fall away, and he will see there were never any walls there. Yeah. Hmm. That's a much better example of a metaphor that I've used, which is that, uh, yeah, somebody trying to break out of a jail cell with the door open, but I like that better. There's not even a cell. You're just holding the door. I think that's fantastic. That's it. Yeah, there's not even, because there isn't, is there? No. No, there's no, there's, there, there is actually no liberation because there's no bondage. But you can't know that. You can't feel that. You can't live that until you can. You can't live that until you do. <clears throat> And we tell ourselves that, well, it's going to be a long, difficult journey for me. And guess what? You just told yourself the future. <laughs> it's mm. going to be a long, difficult journey for you. <laughs> yeah. And when you're holding that door, everywhere you look, there's a cell wall. You turn this way, oh, still a cell wall. This way, locked door. This, if you're holding the door right in front yeah. of you is that wall. Right. Wherever you go. Right. So the, awakeness has great respect for, for everything. It doesn't just hand this out to the special ones and hand itself out to the special ones. What you and I both know is that everybody listening to this broadcast is already awake. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no bondage. There's no, there's no freedom because there's no bondage. They're already awake, but what they don't understand is that the truth is, is that they're already awakeness. Yeah. Because you're you're not a noun, you're a, you're much more of a verb. <laughs> yeah, you're not an adjective to a noun. Awake is like describing something. Yes, you're, you're right. That, it points awake. toward a body and says, "Oh, that Fred right. Davis, he's awake, and I'm not." But what's pointing is awakeness, and what it's pointing at is is conscious awakeness. What's yeah. pointing is unconscious awakeness, and what it's pointing to is conscious awakeness. That's the difference, is that there's only awakeness, but awakeness can experience itself via two different states. One is unconsciously, which is what my neighbors are doing, and they don't even want what I have. <laughs> yeah. Or consciously, which is what's going on over here, which is I simply know who and what I am, which changes, well, it doesn't change anything, but everything. Yeah, if you're the same, like, Whatever it is that's fretting and michaeling yeah, that's is it. the same thing that's hurricaning. That's it. That's right. That's right. right? There's no, there's no, we can't find a hurric the bob at the center of a hurricane bob. We can't no. find a fret at the center uh -huh. of the fret or the michael. Right. It's you've gone, whatever you've gone, is doing all of this. You've gone all the way through your Tootsie Roll pop, and there is no Tootsie Roll in the middle, right? It's just yeah. vacant. And that can be, and it sounds, and it sounds very cold and all that. It's not, it's warm and it's loving. Yeah. And it is, and, and you get so secure with the lack of security. Yeah. It's not that you finally get this, oh, I'm secure. It's just that I disappear and it's just seen that there's nothing permanent. So there's no such thing actually as security. And instead of reacting to that by going, oh my God, I'm so paranoid. You recognize, oh, wow. You mean I don't have to get this right? <sighs> it's already right? Who would have guessed? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Atlas gets to put the world day. down. Excuse me. What? So we can talk about this all day. I love it. Yeah, I um, said. Yeah, so, so I said Atlas gets to put the world down. He's been carrying it around over his shoulders. Uh, he, gets to put, he gets to let that down. And that, now I'll let you continue. I've interrupted you. I think. Oh no! I mean, I was, I was just breathing it in and enjoying the moment and saying, I mean, I could talk to you about this all day, but I don't want to take up all your time. Um, but I thank you. Yeah. For inviting us 
to this moment? Oh, it's, over it's, over. it's well, well, just here's the, something for everybody to, to think about, which is true, as you know. This is not living, what we're, where we're living is we're not living in the now. We are the now. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great place to end. <laughs> Thank you for this. This has been wonderful. It's great to oh, see you. Great to so talk to you. you. Um, yeah. And I, you, you're you're already doing great. But I wish you the the, the continued uh, success in everything that you do. And uh, and I love you very much. Thank you. Same to you. Love you too. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop here. All right. Bye bye. So what? Then, so I've stopped the. Um, Let's see, is okay. it still it is still recording I'll stop the recording